need all this stuff. I've got the class representative seat all locked up. Don't be too sure, Oliver. There's some very important qualities a politician should have. Oh, yeah. You mean like lying, cheating, making empty promises? Hi. Have you seen Lionel? I thought he was in your room. Last time I saw him, he was playing beyond the toilet. Maybe he's outside playing in the garbage. I hope not. It's trash tape. I hope Lionel's had his shots. Nah, he's too little. Speaking of size, these should be bigger, with bolder colors, something more daring, yet not too self-conscious. Kelly, I'm running for class representative. I'm not fashion advisor. Trust me, I learned all about this stuff in current events. You have to leave the voters with something to remember you by. <laughs> well, if it isn't the budding politician. I hear you're gonna win by a landslide. If all the other candidates drop dead. <laughs> hey, Kelly, is your old man at home? No. Mr. Haskell, maybe you could give us a few helpful campaign hints. Sure. The most important thing is to leave a lasting impression in the voter's mind. Exactly. In your case, I'd suggest bribery. Uh, big bills if you can get them. <laughs> Frankly, Mr. Haskell, I plan on winning this election with honesty and hard work. Two qualities I found to be completely useless. <laughs> Hi, champ. Hi, Kelly. Uh, your grandmother said you're working on your campaign. Can I help? I already tried that, Beeve. Your kid is totally hopeless. Speaking of which, what are you doing here? Yeah, I came over looking for Wally. Want to borrow his lawnmower? Oh, is Gert back getting sore from bending over using the clippers? I appreciate your half-witted attempt at humor, but I'm afraid I couldn't force a smile if Gert packed up and left me. I'm being tortured by this mean, despicable con artist. Sounds like you met your match. Very funny. Anyway, last week I put in this new driveway. Now the asphalt's buckling. There's a shock. Hey, get this. This old gypsy calls herself Madame Rosa. Claims she can predict the future. Maybe she can. If she could predict the future, she never would have hired me. <laughs> you better be careful, Mr. Haskell. I saw a movie once where this gypsy put a curse on some guy, made his whole life miserable. I'm married. I got two kids. My life is already miserable. <laughs> eh, the broad can't touch me. Did you lose your bat? <laughs> I want the $1,200 you cheated me out of, or a curse will follow you all the days of your life. Ah, you must have met my kids. i tell you what, I'll give you 10 bucks to turn them into stone. <laughs> it's not wise to make fun of the forces of nature. Okay, then I'll just stick to you. Now, you can take that two-bit hood ornament and stick it where the asphalt cracked, because you're not getting a dime out of me. <laughs> Orella, Disperosa, it may do. Dipsy. I'll bet you say that to all the boys. <laughs> From this moment forward, you're dead, me, bozo. Hey, be careful of low flying birds on your way home. <laughs> what a wacko! <laughs> I'm elected as your class representative. You'll have your name personalized in day glow red on your lockers. There will be written notices from any teacher before pop quizzes. How am I doing so far? Is it too early to concede? <laughs> Oliver, I have always found that a nice warm smile works wonders with voters. You mean like this? You go in the living room. I'll get some ice for your hand. Mr. Haskell, what happened to you? Oh, nothing. I just bit myself when I was eating a hot dog. 
And he threw four gutter balls, lost the match, and on top of that, got his hand stuck in the ball return. I haven't had a night this bad since my bookie died. He's convinced that Madame Rosa is out to get him. Who's out to get you? Yeah, that gypsy witch. What gypsy witch? Another one of uh, Eddie's less than satisfied customers. I'll get the idea. Hold it. You actually think a gypsy has put a curse on you? You know, I tried that once as a kid. I sure hope she has better luck. It's just like that movie I saw. Not now, Oliver. All right, but don't say I didn't warn you. Ever since that witch came to my house today, nothing's gone right. Eddie, of all the dumb things I've ever heard you say, this is the most ridiculous. Listen, Eddie, a few strange things have happened to you. But that doesn't mean you're under some sort of a curse. You're being silly. You know, you're letting your imagination run away with you. Now you go home and you let Gert take care of you. Yeah, Gert's away at a three-day survival course. When you go home, you get a good night's sleep, and you forget all about this being cursed. I'm not so sure. It's Madame Rosa. She sent an evil reptile to get me. Quick, get across. An exorcist. Get a hold of yourself, Eddie. Uh, hey, there you are, Lionel. Kevin's been looking all over for you. How'd you get over here? Oh, that's Lionel. Don't worry, Mr. Haskell. He's harmless. Harmless, huh? Then why was he giving me that look? What look? This look. <laughs> oh, Eddie, everything that's happened to you has happened to Beaver any number of times. Oh, great. Now she's turning me into him. <laughs> My life is over. until your wife started putting the moves on me. You're disgusting. Your lips say no, but your eyes say yes. My hands say no, too. <laughs> I guess I'm outvoted. <laughs> You're also out the door. Go ahead. Throw me out to that treacherous troll. Maybe I'll get hit by a car or struck by lightning. I'm starting to cheer up already. Well, you got to help me. I couldn't sleep. I kept dreaming of evil spirits and phantoms and worse. Can't you see that Madame Rosa's condemned me? All right, Eddie, get hold of yourself. All right, I'll call Madame Rosa in the morning and see if we can't get this thing straightened out. You're a saint, Wallace. But in the meantime, for all of our sakes, please, get some rest. Whatever you say. <laughs> Quit hogging the blankets. <laughs> Here, you idiot. <laughs> hey, Wally, ow! Ow! <laughs> 
Hurry up and finish, sweetie. Grandma's going to be here any minute. Dad, how come Mr. Haskell slept on the couch last night? Well, honey, um, Eddie had a bad night at home last night. <laughs> All his lights went dim. That's what Mom always says about him. Hi. Oh, hi, Mom. Hi. <laughs> hi, Grandma. Hi, sweetheart. Are you ready to go to the amusement park? Of course. Can we go on the ride and spin around and make it throw up? Only twice. Bye, everyone. Come on. I gotta go, too. I promised Dolly I'd help him with his campaign speech. Bye, honey. Bye, Dad. Bye, Mom. <laughs> Oh, uh, hi, Eddie. How'd you sleep? Sleep? Who could sleep? All I could think about was a beast woman from Transylvania. Besides, that's the most uncomfortable couch I've ever been on. Well, look at the bright side. Most of the other couches you've been on have cost you $80 an hour. I gotta run. <laughs> Bye, dear. Bye. <laughs> what about breakfast? Not that her cooking is any good, but a condemned man is entitled to a final meal. Boy, she's a real beaut in the morning. Hey, did you talk to the Wicked Witch of the West yet? Yeah, I just got off the phone with her. She'll be here at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Hmm. Bad move, Sam. Once she knows where you live, your life will never be the same. Look, Eddie, I want you to go home and get cleaned up. And when she gets here, you let me do all the talking. Now, that means no wisecracks and no insults. You warned me, Wallace. I'll be on my best behavior for the old battle axe. Wait for it. It figures... I just wish you'd have some paperwork on the job. Some receipts, anything. Hey, I can't save that junk forever. All right, now look, uh, just let me do all the talking. You won't even know that I'm here. I should be so lucky. Ah, you must be Madame Rosa. Thank you for coming. I'm Wally Cleaver, Mr. Haskell's friend. Ah. And attorney. Uh, but please, come in. Well, it is nice to meet you, Mr. Cleaver. I do hope we can resolve this quickly. <laughs> yes, I hope so, too. Mm. <clears throat> please sit down. Thank you. Eddie? <laughs> Madam Rosa, it's nice to see you again. And might I add, that's a lovely ensemble you're wearing. And may I say that cheap clothes seem to suit you. <laughs> So far, so good. Now, Mr. Haskell has um, informed me of the difficulties that you two seem to be having, and uh, I thought that by having this meeting this afternoon, we might be able to come to a mutually acceptable resolution to this problem. <laughs> there wouldn't be a problem if this cretin had done his job correctly. <clears throat> Madam Rosa, I think that the purpose of this meeting would be better served if we could put aside our personality differences. Well said, Wallace. Grandpa Haskell, the king of the used cars, rest his soul, told me that in dealing with problems like this, it's best to conduct oneself in a civil manner. <laughs> Too bad you didn't listen, slime ball. <laughs> Eddie. Now, uh, Madam Rosa, may I call you Madam? Uh, what do you see as a solution to this uh, problem? Well, first of all, I would like to have the job redone correctly. Well, I, I think we can agree to that. Good. Secondly, I would like Mr. Haskell to pay me back the $1,200 as damages. Now, just a second here, vampire. Uh, careful, Eddie. With your looks, the last thing you need is warts. Oh, yeah? Well, if I had a face like yours, I'd shit. Hold it, hold it, hold it. We're trying to control ourselves. Uh, Madam Rosa, why don't you have your attorney contact me? He's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, don't be. I can still talk to him. You can? I can see now that the only way for us to resolve this is through a seance. The spirits will advise me how to handle this worm. Uh, j just a minute, madam. <laughs> Eddie, I, uh, I think I have an idea. You have a lot of ideas. Is this one any good? <clears throat> we think that a seance would be a terrific idea, Madam Rosa. Good. Well, here's my address. Uh, I will see you both at 9 o'clock tonight. Weird. Will you still talk to me when you're dead? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. I'm so glad you all could come. 
So that we may find an answer to this matter, we will be entering the world of the unknown. Oh, brother, the only thing unknown is what planet she's from. <laughs> Silence! We must have total concentration. We will need to clear our minds of all thoughts. Shouldn't be a big problem for you. And join hands. Okay, but that's as far as I go. <laughs> oh, inhabitants of the spirit world, make your presence known to us mortals. I didn't hear any bells. <laughs> oh, patience. Spirits, I ask you to send another sign for this disbelieving fool. Don't you pay your electric bill? This man needs to be shown the error of his ways. Spirits, speak through me and tell us of his evil deeds. Oh, Eddie, I told you before, don't bring your dates to the used car lot. Grandpa Haskell, is that you? We buried you five years ago. Huh, I'm amazed you remembered. Well, how could I forget? I hit six horses at the track that day. Uh, same old wise cracking, Eddie. <laughs> you won't be laughing when you join me down here. Down here? Wait a second. I know I'm not exactly a saint, but I always figured purgatory at the most. Oh, there's still time to save yourself. Mend your ways and settle your debts. Pay back those you have cheated, wrong, plundered, and backstabbed. Mm -hmm. You put that back on the shelf. Oh, no. Georgia Dickerson. Who's Georgia Dickerson? You accused me of stealing from your grocery store when I was 12. That's right. And what did you do when I yelled at you? I burned your house down. Huh? <laughs> Mr. Haskell, do you remember me? Vilma Peterson? I sued you for pouring in the air cement on my porch. I always wondered if you survived that shotgun blast. Shotgun blast? In the back. Oh. Oh, what? What was that? Oh, do you really think so? Well, oh, I'm not so sure. Well, well, okay. Uh, the spirits have decided. Uh, I'll drop the demand for damages and settle for having the job redone. It's, it's a, a deal. deal. Uh, the seance is over. You can show yourselves out. <laughs> Mom, you were terrific. <laughs> yeah, you even had me convinced. Wally, it was a good idea. Thanks. What are you doing, Bee? Oh, I was just seeing how this stuff works. Come on, let's get out of here. This place gives me the creeps. Uh, Mrs. Cleaver, you really were great. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I don't condone what you did, Eddie. But I thought Madame Rosa was pushing a little bit too hard. Well, I, for one, am glad this whole mess is over with. Oh, and Mrs. Cleaver, if there's anything I can ever do to repay you. I could use your help on Saturday, taking some cartons to the Goodwill. Uh, Saturday? Uh, gee, I don't know. You see, there's this really big pool tournament, and with my workload... Oh! I'll be there at nine. Good. <laughs> there you are. I've been waiting for you. Why, am I in trouble? Well, I don't think so. How'd this speech go? You want to hear it again? No, thanks. I think I know it by heart. How'd your classmates like it? Well, it was a little rough at first. But then I remembered what you said about smiling and everything, and I breezed right through it. Good for you. Think you'll win? I doubt it. 
Ricky Fenwick, my opponent, he's throwing a party at his house for the whole class with a band. Um, sometimes those big spenders are hard to beat. No, that's okay. You know, I may not win the election, but Amy Thompson loved my smile. So we're going to Ricky's party together. Good. <laughs> Tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern, Doris Day and Brian Keith never thought getting married could be this complicated. With six, you get egg roll. Then at 9 o'clock, join host Tom Chapin for the world premiere of National Geographic Explorer. Now, NWA Main Event is next on the Superstation.